Hey everybody, welcome back to day number 22 of our 30 day EKG challenge. And today we have a fun EKG. It's monomorphic VTAC round two. And today we're going to be going over a few reasons on why this is VTAC and not a different rhythm. So I hope this really helps you solidify your understanding of VTAC versus maybe SVT with a barency. So when some people look at this EKG, they're going to notice a few things. One, scan through it, it's a very regular rhythm, and look how fast it is, right? It's regular, and it's occurring at a rate of, if this one falls on a solid line, 300, 150, so about 150 beats per minute, so it's a regular complex tachycardia, but the QRSs are quite wide. Look closely, you can see my QRS starts here and it ends maybe here, so that QRS complex is certainly QRS certainly greater than 120 beats per minute, right? It's a wide complex rhythm. So when I see a, a regularly occurring fast rhythm with a wide complex tachycardia, I need to make sure that this is not a ventricular tachycardia or VTAC, right? VT for short. So how do we do that? Well, first thing I do is I want to determine is this VT or is this an SVT with a bundle branch block, right? Bundle branch blocks can create a wide complex rhythm. And if it's a supraventricular tachycardia in the setting of a bundle branch block, we can have a really fast, uh, regularly occurring uh, right bundle branch block. So some people, when they look at this rhythm, they'll go, well, let's just see. Let's look up in V1. And I notice in V1, I've got kind of this R and then a little bit of an R prime. Notice that there's like an R, R prime. And some people are like, man, well, V2, it's got this R, S, R prime. So this is certainly a right bundle branch block, right? The answer is obviously no. But let's go through, because the title of the video is VTAC, but let's go through why this is not a right bundle branch block morphology. This is so far from a right bundle branch block morphology. And why is that? Because we need to understand what drives right bundle branch blocks. And in V1, usually we have R, S, R prime that looks like this. It's a little r a bigger S, and then a bigger R prime, right? That's what my RS R prime looks like in V1 in a right bundle branch block. So this is a right bundle branch block. The reason why is because this R, this first R, this is my septal R wave. Remember the septum, if I look over here at V1, the septum depolarizes from the left bundle in this direction. It's just a little itty bitty force, and that creates this little R prime in V1. That's my R prime. So if I understand what drives a right bundle branch block, then I'm going to know that that's my septal R wave. And this is not a septal R wave, y'all. There's nothing about this that is septal. There is no way a septum is going to generate an R wave that is that tall. So right there out the gate, I want you guys to all realize that is why we learn these EKGs anatomically. Because we have to be able to differentiate waveforms and not just memorize facts. So, okay, I've done that. Now let's keep going through my algorithm. I look for P waves. I don't see any atrial activity before any of these QRS complexes. I just look right in front of it. I don't see any. Um, and I look to scan through the rhythm. I notice that I've got an extreme axis. Notice that AVR is positive. There are not many QRS complexes that will produce a positive deflection in AVR. Look, AVR is all the way over here. So that tells me that my QRS axis is heading somewhere in that direction. Well, that's not very common unless what? Unless this is a VTAC that's arising from some type of ectopic focus that is low within the ventricles, right? Causing a ventricular reentry mechanism that is moving from low to high in that direction. So all of these things together, I have these positive QRSs in AVR, I have atypical RR primes in V1 that are not typical of a right bundle branch block. I've got a very fast rhythm, and it's occurring with a wide complex. I'm going to look very subtly for AV dissociation. Remember we said in yesterday's video that AV dissociation is the hallmark of monomorphic VTAC. And so when I look closely, I don't know if I see a whole lot, but I look for bite-sized P waves, right? So I look for bite-sized atrial activity. And if I look here, look at my normal T waves. They're kind of these broad, slopey T waves, broad, slopey T waves. And look at this one. There's this bite 
this little chunk that's taken out of that T wave. That little chunk is short, it's sharp. That is evidence of AV dissociation. Remember that AV dissociation, you're going to see within these wide complex beats, you're going to see small little evidences. Look, here's another one here of atrial activity sporadically at a rate that is less than that of the ventricular rate. And so we would say that that is a good example of AV dissociation. Remember that's because this ventricular reentry pathway that is occurring here and is going around and around and around, this is happening really, really, really fast. And it's going to be faster than any atrial rate. So if we see atrial P waves that are occurring less often than these ventricular wide complex QRSs, that's a good example of AV dissociation. And AV dissociation is the gold standard of monomorphic VTAC. So with that being said, the point of this video was to differentiate these, these bundle branch block uh, SVT rhythms from VTAC. And so this one was a good way to differentiate a right bundle branch block from VTAC. They're both going to have a wide complex QRS. They can both exist in, uh, in, in arrhythmias that are uh, tacky arrhythmias, right? And so we have to be able to dial it down anatomically and explain why that this is not the case because, you know, you're going to treat this patient and um, you need to be able to make sure that you're giving them a treatment that's not going to destabilize them any further. And so I hope this helps. If you have any questions about it, uh, throw it down to the comments. And if not, thanks for watching and um, enjoy the rest of the challenge. Have a great rest of your day.